I'm ethnically Jewish, and I believe in Jesus the Messiah, so why am I not a Messianic Jew? Hey guys, welcome back to Kingdom Craft, where we talk about Christianity while building churches in Minecraft. And the church that I've been working on is a Presbyterian church in Minecraft. It's not a substitute for real church. I'm a Presbyterian in real life as well, and I encourage everyone to go to church in real life instead of, you know, just going to church in Minecraft, because that doesn't count. But yes, I am a Presbyterian as opposed to a Messianic Jew. So what is a Messianic Jew? Some people think it's any Jew who believes Jesus is the Messiah, or any Jew who believes the Messiah has come at all for that matter, because I know there's a few small Jewish groups that believe in other messiahs that have arrived. Generally, mainstream Judaism believes they are still waiting for their messiah, and generally Christianity, actually all of Christianity, believes that the messiah of the Jews has already come, it was Jesus Christ. So, some people think that simply because I am someone of Jewish heritage who believes Jesus is the Messiah because I'm a Christian, some people think that automatically makes me a Messianic Jew. Um, because I was at a friend's house a few summers ago, and her grandmother was like this, you know, dispensational Zionist lady who thinks the state of Israel is going to make the world end or something. And when she found out that I was Christian and that I was ethnically Jewish. She looked at me like I was a celebrity and she was like, you're a Messianic Jew. And then I was like, not really. I wasn't really raised in the Jewish faith. My dad was though. My dad's, I guess, more so a Messianic Jew than I am. So then she gave my dad this like magazine called Zion's Hope about how the state of Israel is going to save the world or something. The dispensationalists are funny. Um, yeah, I am not a dispensationalist because I'm a Presbyterian. We believe in covenant theology, which means we believe that the Jews aren't God's chosen people. We believe God's chosen people are simply whoever is part of God's covenant, which has been the same covenant in the Old Testament and the New Testament. So that means the continuation of the community started by Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is not modern-day Jewish people, but is the church, which is made up of Jews and Gentiles. So the chosen people isn't necessarily Jews, it's Christians who are both Jew and Gentile. Um, so if you're defining Messianic Jew as simply any, any Jew who believes in Jesus, then sure, I guess you could say that's what I am, but generally Messianic Judaism speaks of a particular movement that's distinct from that. Generally Messianic Judaism is a movement that tries to see itself as part of the Jewish community rather than the church community, but still aligning itself with Jesus, basically. Um, so there's a few problems with that. Number one, uh, basically Messianic Jewish groups, especially Messianic Jewish groups that follow Jesus are not seen as legitimate Jewish groups by the rest of Judaism. Um, it's, it's weird. In Judaism, in a lot of Jewish communities, especially Reform Jewish communities, which is kind of where my family is from, um, they don't care if you believe in God. They don't care if you believe in the Jewish scriptures. They don't care if you believe in the Jewish God. Uh, you could be like a Wiccan or a, a worship the pagan mother goddess and still be considered a legitimate Jew. But as soon as you worship Jesus Christ, you're out. This is because, historically speaking, the Jewish community in many ways defined itself in opposition to the Christian community. This is what I want people to understand. As someone who has a... Okay, why are there so many chickens in my church? Um, it's only been a few weeks since I released the last Kingdom Craft video, but I release them many months in advance sometimes because I don't play Minecraft when I'm in my university. I upload videos in advance when I'm not in school. This is my first video after coming back from a semester in Texas, now I'm back to New York. And I guess chickens have multiplied like crazy in my seminary while I've been gone, so that's interesting. I, I don't, how did all these, what, how did all these chickens get here? Okay, um, they've infested the place. My seminary's infested with chickens. Anyway, um, but like I was saying, what, I was, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, the Jews. Yeah, so the Jewish community as of today, the modern rabbinic Judaism is not the religion of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I want people to understand that. It's the religion of the Pharisees. So the Old Testament faith, Old Testament Judaism at the time of Christ split into two groups, the ones that followed Jesus and the ones that didn't. The ones that followed Jesus became the modern Christian community. And the ones that did not, the ones that followed the Pharisees, who Jesus had a lot of disputes with, and the Pharisees greatly opposed Jesus and his ministry, 
those groups evolved into modern day Judaism. This is not some like conspiracy theory or something, by the way. This is what I learned in my secular religion class in, in university. Um, the the Judaism of Jesus's time was Second Temple Judaism. That's what it's referred to in scholarly circles. Second Temple Judaism. And that version of Judaism was destroyed in 70 AD, just like Jesus predicted it would be destroyed because of its apostasy. It was destroyed in 70 AD when the Second Jewish Temple was destroyed. So the Sadducees, who were kind of like the leaders of the Temple, they just vanished. However, the Pharisees, who were like middle-class people, not necessarily the, the elites, but still had a lot of influence and power, um, they sort of survived and they started modern rabbinic Judaism to basically preserve their traditions, the same traditions that Jesus greatly opposed. So my point in saying this is that there is a categorical difference between the faith that Christ belonged to and practiced and the, the modern Jewish faith today. So just because the Old Testament religion was called Judaism does not mean it's the same religion as the Judaism of today. And when, Judy, when modern rabbinic Judaism started, they changed a lot of things about the faith. First, a big thing is that in ancient Old Testament Judaism, a lot of scholars uh, believed that there was a multiplicity of persons in the Godhead, sort of a precursor to the Trinity, because there are hints at the Trinity in the Old Testament. You know, the prophet Zechariah says God will send God to dwell among his people. It's not like um, the ancient Jews had like a perfect formulation of the Trinity or anything, uh, but there are a lot of ancient Jewish writings that say like, you know, the angel of, of the Lord is the same God as the Lord, but a distinct person from the Lord. That is basically proto-Trinitarianism. And then modern Judaism basically threw that belief in the garbage to make, to try and strongly distinguish itself from Christianity. So I think Christianity is the true continuation of ancient Old Testament Judaism, not modern Judaism. Modern Judaism is not. And that's kind of why even a lot of secular Jews, a lot of Jews who are atheists, they still consider themselves fully Jewish because they belong to the Jewish community. But they have told me to my face that even though I'm just as ethnically Jewish as they are, I don't count as a real Jew because I follow Jesus. It's like, okay, well, if they're secular Jews, if they're atheists, then why did they shouldn't care about the theological claims of Judaism? And they really don't. The only theological claim that they care about at all is that they do not like Jesus very much. And I know a lot of people who come from a Jewish background who have converted to Christianity that say the same thing. There is, I mean, I mean, partly it's probably because of the historical struggles between Judaism and Christianity. But in Jewish circles, it is very taboo to, for someone to convert to Christianity. Uh, and it's seen as like abandoning the Jewish community or betraying the Jewish community in some cases if someone who is Jewish converts to Christianity. So that's why I don't like it when movements try to identify with the modern Jewish community, with the community of modern rabbinic Judaism, the community that was started by the Pharisees, and they try to say, um, we're still, we're still going to follow Jesus because the community Jesus started is the church. Uh, and that brings me to the second reason why I do not want to consider myself a Messianic Jew and why I'm skeptical of Messianic Judaism. Generally, Messianic Jewish groups are not rooted in the church. So there's a bunch of Christian denominations. There's Presbyterian and other Protestant groups like Baptist and Lutheran and Methodist and Episcopalian. And there's Catholicism, there's Eastern Orthodoxy, there's Oriental Orthodoxy, lots of different groups. But what they all have in common is they all are descended from the early church that was started by Jesus and the Apostles. It branched in many different directions. Many of those groups like the Catholics and... Okay, why are there so many chickens here too? My church and place has been infested with chickens. Many of these groups claim to be the one true church, but there's still a common heritage there. Objectively, there is a common heritage of all these groups in the early church. However, a lot of Messianic Jewish groups, they are not founded upon the early church. They're not rooted in the early church. They might not adhere to the Nicene Creed. So that's why I feel like Messianic Jewish groups, at best, they're basically Pentecostals who say Shalom. At worst, they tend to sometimes be non-Trinitarian because they're not rooted in the church that follows the Nicene Creed and stuff. 
Um, a lot of Messianic Jewish groups will say Jesus is the Messiah, but not God. And it's like, okay, that is that is not enough. Um, because Islam, Islam believes Jesus is the Messiah. Islam believes Jesus was a miraculous prophet born to the Virgin Mary. But Islam strictly does not believe Jesus was God. And that is the big differentiating factor between Christianity and every other religion. We believe Jesus is God. Now, there's some Messianic Jews who believe Jesus is God, but the problem is it's not all of them. Um, and there's a substantial Messianic Jewish community that does not. There's this movement like the Hebrew Roots Movement. I'm not sure how closely connected that is to Messianic Judaism. Um, because I used to be a bit more, you know, proud of my Jewish heritage. I used to be somewhat interested in Messianic Judaism. So I was investigating this, like, Hebrew Roots Movement. And I was listening to these Hebrew Roots guys on YouTube. And they, they were Trinitarians. They did believe, you know, Jesus is God. But they were lamenting the fact that a lot of Hebrew Roots teachers uh, do not believe Jesus was God. And I was just thinking... If that's the case, maybe there's something wrong with your movement. Like, if a substantial amount of the leaders of your movement don't believe in the most basic truth about God, that Jesus is God, that's kind of a big problem. Maybe that shows that your movement is flawed, and I think the fundamental flaw of Messianic Judaism is it's not rooted in the church. So, um, I would much rather have pure doctrines, the pure Christian doctrines, than have a Christian community that... Um, celebrates the traditions of my ancestors or whatever, because, you know, I don't I don't care much about my ancestors, I care about Jesus Christ. And I think that the um, One Holy Catholic Apostolic Church, specifically in the Presbyterian tradition, but I respect the other Christian traditions as well, that's where you're going to find Jesus. And um, I'm not saying all Messianic Jews are not true followers of Christ, I'm just saying it's not a very reliable brand. That's what I'm saying. It's it's, it's suspicious at best. It's suspicious at best. So there's a good chance that there's a lot of devout Messianic Jewish believers, and there are people who consider themselves Messianic Jews and still belong to a more established Christian tradition, and that's what I'll get to in a second. But a lot of these Messianic Jewish groups are like non-denominational communities. You don't know what they're descended from. Uh, you don't know if um, their ministers are, have like a valid education or ordination, it's it just seems uh, very sketchy to me. And I would much rather be in a, a church that has a, you know, solid, well-founded tradition and all that. These chickens are really getting in the way here. I feel like some people have just been pranking me by, like, throwing eggs at my seminary and hatching a bunch of chickens. I, I would believe that. Um, okay, um, I'm gonna make some stairs. Okay, I think maybe these, um, maybe these chickens are from John MacArthur's Mafia. They're mad that I, I don't like a, a dispensational view of Judaism. Maybe that, I think that's the reason why. It, it's as good an explanation as any. You know? Uh, anyway. So, I have encountered some people, even in the Presbyterian Church, who identify as Messianic Jews. Uh, it's a very, very obscure, niche group of people. I went to North Carolina to meet some Presbyterian seminary people to work on, you know, helping retake the PCUSA and help fix the theology of the PCUSA. While I was there, I visited this interesting group of Pentecostal Presbyterians. Yeah, you heard me right. Pentecostal Presbyterians. Uh, that, that sounds like dry water or cold fire, basically, because Presbyterians historically are like the least Pentecostal, most cessationist, most stiff worship type of Christians that there are. But there is a weird group of Presbycostals called, I think it's Presbyterian Reform Ministries International. It's uh, P-R-M-I, I think. I, I might be getting it wrong. Uh, but there is this interesting little community of charismatic Presbyterians who basically adhere to all the doctrines of the Reformed tradition, and they are part of the Presbyterian Church. I think they're part of the Presbyterian Church USA even, but they're and they're part of the Presbyterian Church without being liberal, because a lot of people don't realize this. There's a strong group of conservatives like me in the PC USA. Um, we're a minority, but we exist, and I'm trying to work for reform in the PC USA rather than giving up on it. Uh, but yeah, these Presbycostals, they did exist, and in that community, there were a lot of people who had Messianic Jewish tendencies. Um, the, when I first walked in, I saw this guy wearing a cross and a yarmulke at the same time, and I asked the guy I was with, I was like, is, is this guy ethnically Jewish? And he's like, no. <laughs> so it's like, 
I'm the one who actually was ethnically Jewish there. I wasn't wearing anything Jewish because, you know, I don't care about identifying as Jewish at all. I care about identifying as Christian. Um, and a lot of these people that identify with Messianic Judaism, they had like, you know, zero Jewish heritage. <laughs> not like they have to or anything. Uh, it felt a bit like a LARP to me. I'm not saying it's bad or anything because this group was, you know, legitimately a Presbyterian group. But what I'm saying is, uh, a lot of Messianic Judaism is very connected to Pentecostal and Charismatic movements for whatever reason. I I'm not sure why. Um, I know that there's a, a YouTuber, like, a, um, I, I used to listen to him back when I was a bit more interested in Messianic Judaism. His name's, like, Michael Brown. He does a lot of uh, pro-Trinitarian apologists, so I like him. Um, he considers himself a Messianic Jew. He does have Jewish heritage. Um... And he's also very, you know, Pentecostal and charismatic in nature. So I, I see a lot of overlap between Messianic Judaism and Pentecostalism. My problem with Pentecostalism is not that it's continuationist. I'm, I've never really considered myself a strict cessationist. I'm open, I'm more open to like charismatic, the existence of charismatic gifts than a lot of reformed people are. I just feel like the way Pentecostals do it is often not very careful. I, th I think it's better if there's a, um, if there's like a more established church overseeing all of this. My problem with Pentecostalism is it's often doctrinally very sloppy. Uh, that's why there's a whole group of oneness Pentecostals that are non-Trinitarian, which is, which is heresy. Of course, not all Pentecostals are like that, but same, same deal with Messianic Judaism, with Pentecostalism. Um, it's often not rooted in historical Christianity, which is why you'll see a lot of sus theology um, that's pretty common. So I guess the three main reasons why I don't consider myself a Messianic Jew are number one, um, the Jewish community is largely built upon a rejection of Christ, so it's not something I want to associate myself with. Uh, even if it is my heritage, you know, maybe my heritage is bad. <laughs> like, of course, I believe in the end, all nations will be redeemed, including ethnically Jewish people, but that doesn't mean I should associate myself with the Jewish community before that happens, if you know what I mean. So, yes, I'm not someone who believes that God is completely finished with the Jewish, the Jewish nation as a whole, but at the same time, that doesn't mean I should associate myself with them because right now they strongly reject Christ. And as St. Paul was lamenting this in Romans 9, but he said they have experienced a real hardening. And it's a hardening that I've seen being in the Jewish community myself. It's a hardening that has lasted almost 2,000 years and will probably continue to last until the end of time. I don't know exactly what's going to happen. I'm not... Okay, someone put a bunch of pork here. I'm not saying that the state of Israel will have anything to do with it. I mean... Maybe there will be a mass conversion of ethnically Jewish people at the end of time, but it could just as easily be New York City, because there's a ton, ton of Jews in New York City. It's where my family's from. Um, it's where I grew up. Well, not in the city, but in, you know, the metro area. So it could just as easily be New York City as Israel. I think it's more likely to be New York City, because I'm a New Yorker and we have a massive ego. That's the first reason. The second reason is because Messianic Judaism is not rooted in the church much of the time. It's not rooted in Nicene Christianity. It seems to try to be like an outside group that tries to join in with the rest of Christianity. And the third reason is it's often very connected to like weird Pentecostal groups. Not saying that that's all bad, but there often is not the most care taken to have accurate doctrines. So those are the reasons why I'm not a Messianic Jew. If you're ethnically Jewish, um, you don't need to find a little ethnic club to be a Christian. You can just join the church because there is one ethnicity, well, one race, one nation of people in Christ. The book of Acts says God has made one blood from all nations. So that's why I've always felt more at home in the Christian community than in the Jewish community, even though most Christians are not the same ethnicity as me. I don't care because they worship the same God that I do, and the Jews largely don't. So that's why I'm not a Messianic Jew.